Hi, we're going to look at proportions, investigating how we analyse them in SPSS, R Commander and R. Um, under the bonnet, all three stats packages use uh, binomial, multinomial and chi-square probability density functions, or we can specify um, an exact p-value. More details at my website below. Proportions are often represented in the research literature as p if we're talking about sample, not to be confused with the p-value, and also we can see the sign there for population proportions, which is the pi symbol, not to be confused with the pi value. We really need to consider eight aspects. First of all, that we're talking about nominal data. If it's interval or ratio data, really we have converted it to nominal data for the purpose of this analysis, just counts in other words. In the simplest situation, we have a single proportion. Say we have 95 out of 157 people say water reduces size of aging on their skin. Um, there we have one group and one proportion. But we might have a situation where we're not just looking at water reducing the size of aging, but substance A and substance B and possibly substance C. So there we have several independent proportions against possibly an overall average to look at. Along with this, we might want to compare our set of proportions against a set of proportions we expect to occur if we have a certain distribution. Say if our data was normally distributed, we might expect a certain proportion to fall in each of our categories. We can analyse this using what's known as a one-way classification. Similarly, we might have two variables with a set of classifications forming what's known as a contingency table. We can analyse this contingency table using the chi-square test, which we will look in detail at. Further details provided in the website below. To help us analyse the results of our analysis, we can carry out what's known as the residual analysis. This is basically looking at the differences between the observed and the expected values for each of our cells. And we can do this graphically by drawing association or bar or mosaic plots. Mosaic plots aren't commonly used nowadays, but they are very useful. We need to think about particularly the chi-square assumptions because the chi-square distribution, which we're using for a contingency table, really is only suitable for large samples or samples where we have more than five values in each cell. Um, we'll look more at this as we work through the set examples. Finally, we need to consider a situation where perhaps our data is not all independent. All the above situations, only one person is providing one value. In the situation here, we have perhaps before and after experiment where a person provides a value before and after they've taken a drug. In this situation, we need to consider the fact that they are dependent sets of data, and then we use what knows as Machinaire's test to analyse it. Further details on my website below. But let's get started now with the actual analysis. Using my chi-square handout, let's consider the simplest situation. Say we have 328 post-operative infections from a group of 1,361 patients. That is, we have 1,033 non-infected patients. And say that we know that countrywide the proportion is 25%. How does our proportion compare to the countrywide proportion? Here we have the data in SPSSS. Just let's look at the variable view quickly. So we have two variables. One is group with two values. The first value. One represents a clear situation, two represents an infected situation for an individual. And the second variable is count, that is the number of cases in each category. So we look back here, we have category two, we have a count of 328, in category one, we have a count of 1033. You can't remember what these values mean, you can click on here, it says exactly. Notice we haven't put 
here the total number. Now you could have entered this data with 328 ones down this first column and then 1033 twos down this column. Usually you have count data that's been summarized somewhere in a table rather than the raw count data so you work with this situation. When you work with this situation we want to let SPSS know that these are actually weights. They are individual cases. To do that, to simply go to data weight cases. Data weight cases. And the weighting variable we're using is the count variable. Move it over. Weight cases by count. OK. The output window will come up telling us that something's happening. We can ignore that and go back to our data. To carry out the analysis, simply go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, Binomial. So that's Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, Binomial. Click on there, use the group variable to specify our proportions. You want to change the proportion. 2.25, which we believe to be portion of the population of infected patients. Click on exact. We're going to choose the exact option here, rather binomial distribution. Continue and OK. And there is our result. The observed proportion is 0.24. The hypothesized proportion of the population is 0.25. So we're only looking a 1% difference in the infected rate, which is highly unlikely to be significant, and it says here. The exact value is 0 0.232, the asymptotic version is 0.232 the same. We could have carried this out using the new style dialog box, but it's more complicated and quite um, difficult to get to work. Well, actually, I'll just show you quickly. Non parametric tests, one sample, then it comes up with a set of options, objective, you could say automatic compare, observed, data hypothesized, but then it doesn't give us the option to choose the proportion. We go here, then we have to choose customized tests, pair, observed, binary, to hypothesize, options. We can type in here 0.25 and we can get actually a confidence interval this time. Say OK, run, and there is our result. Rather a complicated way of producing it. But I actually had to fiddle this to get this result. If we go back to the data view, you notice here in the variables, I've selected this as a nominal value. Right, a group of variables nominal. It's normally set to scale. We carry out the analysis again with this set as a scale variable. You end up with significant value because it's actually tried to classify our groups as greater or lesser than 1.5, which of course we don't have in our data, it's just a ones and twos. So you have to be careful using these new dialog boxes. When you do get the new dialog box to work, it's interesting that the results um, allow you to drill down a little more than the old traditional style. So here is our result, which is correct this time. Double click on it, and we have what's known as the model window. The model window gives us a graphical display of the observed proportions against the hypothesized ones, so we can see there's hardly any difference, so we wouldn't expect a significant result. But if we look down here, where it says hypothesis summary view, we can actually choose instead confidence interval summary view. And there are our confidence intervals. I selected all three, by the way. We can also obtain um, the confidence interval in a more traditional way by simply going to analyze descriptive statistics, explore, select a grouping variable into the dependent list. In statistics, we already have confidence intervals, so we can change the level if we wish. 
continue, and then say OK. In the output, we have a constant interval for the mean here, which is 1.21 to 1.26 in all the integer value. So we've got 0 0.218 to 0.263, which is pretty much the same as the confidence intervals we obtained before. There we are, 0 0.218, 0 0.265, 0 0.264 for those two varieties. In R, we can actually find the exact probability just by using the binomial test. So it type binom.test bracket, then the number of successes, in this case people with the disease, out of the total number, that's 1361, which is including 328. Remember that's the total number here, not the alternative outcome as we had in SPSS. Then we specify one a two-sided value, two-sided proportion in the population we think is 25%, 0.25. We want a confidence interval of 95%. One line will do everything. There is the result. The p-value is 0.4527. That's a two-tailed p-value, remember. In SPSS, we had one-tailed p-values, but this is two-tailed. And there is a 95% confidence value. Instead of finding the exact probability with the binomial distribution, we can use the chi-square approximation and by using the prop.test. So here we have the same values again. Um, we have here correct equals false because it applies a continuity calculation as well, which we we'll, don't we'll want to run this time. So you press return and there are our results. This time we get a probability of 0 0.4432 which compares with our previous value of 0.45. So it's just down one hundredth. And we have a confidence interval here, 0.219 in contrast to 0 0.218. And 264 is actually the same. So it doesn't really make much difference if we use the approximation, the chi-square distribution here with the prop test or the exact value with the binomial distribution in this instance. Well, we've managed the first two of our eight aspects. We looked at nominal data and we looked at how we could um, enter the actual weighted scores in SPSSS if we didn't have the raw data. And we considered a single proportion and how to analyse that um, comparing and proportioning a sample against the proportion in a population. It didn't have to be 0.5, we noticed we could change the population parameter value. We'd carried that out in both SPSS and R. We didn't bother with R Commander because it was so easy to do it directly in R. On to the next aspect.